Not too bad. Really tedious. Sitting here, feels really comfortable. Welcome back. Gonna do another day on the Escort today. Made quite a bit of progress since the last video, which I haven't filmed for one reason or another, mainly because when I'm doing stuff in a week, I'm just rushing stuff and I just don't have time to get a camera out. But I have made some good progress. I actually have, almost have a radiator. So I've got as far as all the um, inlets and outlets are done. The bottom mounts are done. I started on the top mounts. They're gonna bolt to here and they're gonna come through the original mount like that. But they need to be removable so I can actually get the thing out. Have a look here as well. So this is where I'm gonna have the filler as opposed to the header tank I used to have over there. So what I'll do today is I'll get this back apart, show you a few more detailed shots, explain what I did with the tanks and stuff. And you see the mounts there as well. And uh, hopefully all I really need to do is do the top mounts, weld the sides up and uh, yeah, it's done. Another job today is the loom. I need to try and get this back in for a second fit. Um, the other day I sat down, I got up really early last Sunday morning, started sorting out all my sensor grounds and stuff. So wires like this where I had to splice them all off so yeah what I've done is I've used little open barrel butt crimp terminals can't really see them through the heat shrink so they've crimped was essentially three ground wires into one wire adhesive lined heat lined heat shrink to give it a good decent seal no solder whatsoever so yeah I need to get this back on do some more trimming yeah let's go from there really so for these top mounts that I've welded on, basically I'm just gonna make two strips I go onto there, could be about 120 more long. So you come around there, you see that there. I weld a pin on that, and then I'll we'll slip them in, slip them out, bolt them on. Everything will be able to come out easily. Use my trusty eBay bandsaw. I'll cut myself some uh, little strips. There we have it. And turn these into my top mounts to around the ends, bolt holes, pin, done. So here we have my two little stabilizer tabs. I'm just gonna bolt on the top of the rad now, mark up for the pins. See the pin comes through the original space. Always sort of weirdly really like the idea of it coming through the original mounting holes. So I actually decided to make these removable just for ease of getting everything in and out. I like to be able to take the radiator in and out quite a lot. It gains a lot of access. So it needs to be as easily removable as possible. You can just see it in there. So I actually went for a rivet nut. You can't really see it. In the bottom of the pin, uh, in the bottom of the plate. So I can just screw the pin in. All in the original mounting holes. Move that up. Radio is not solid mounted. Bit of a wiggle. Good to go. So yeah, next thing to do, sort out the joiner for the bottom red hose. You probably can't really see it. And uh, yeah, get that welded up. And then the radio side things is almost ready for me to weld the tanks on. So here we go. Right, so Mike's just been down. We just fitted some new tyres on his car. Just gonna try and get a bit more done on this. Um, managed to get this little joiner done. Join the rad to the uh, heater and the engine and stuff. Um, just need to make a little mount for this at some point. So now I'm just gonna strip the rad out, show you what I've done inside there, get it ready for welding.
So this is the red so far. As you can see, the end tanks are only just taped on. Um, it's just to make fabricating all the bits and pieces a lot easier along the way. So I can take the tanks off, weld them, tape them back on. Just uh, makes it a damn lot easier, which isn't what I did the first time. So these tanks, they're just 70 mil OD pipe, cut in half, a couple of little bead rolls in them for just a bit of finesse. A little mount at the top. Um, the takeoff of the thermostat's gonna go in there. It's just like a little recirculating bleed. Obviously the main top hose inlet. To get this bit of tape off inside the tanks. Fully welded top, bottom, outlet and everything. Yeah, just to the mount at the bottom, nothing special, but you know holds them in place. So yeah, I'm gonna get the other one off, get all these cleaned up and uh, stick it on. So with these, you can not so much here, Along the inside, this is all like the braze or flux they use to stick them together, and it does not weld. So all of this needs to be cleaned up inside and out um, before I even think about trying to weld the tanks on. All right, so I've just cleaned this up. You kind of see where the uh, where I've cleaned it. So all I used was this the whole time, which is really people say the only thing you should ever clean aluminium up with is a burr but it is quite inconvenient and I'm not that great with it so I don't normally and I tend to get away with it just about but yeah so that's all cleaned up now try and square all the ends off so it all butts up nicely and then uh, tack it on and hope for the best that's probably about as good a fit off as I'm gonna get without spending days on it I'm quite happy with that <laughs> So, one tank welded on. This is the back. It just looks all right. Ooh, around the top, still looks all right. Down the front, where everyone's gonna see, actually still looks all right, which I am amazed about. So yeah, actually really happy with that. By this point, welding my last radio up, I was um, already disappointed in my welding, so this is bang on. Mm. Um, over the moon with this. So I'm just gonna let this cool back down again. I'm gonna tackle the other side. The second turn cool done. All quite nice along the back. I don't know if you can see, if you can see in there. Oh, nice line of full penetration all the way down. Well, as far as I can see anyway. If I flip it over. Again along the top, not too bad. A little bit wobbly at the bottom, but no one's gonna see that anyway. So yeah, all good. Can't wait to, uh, for it to cool down, I'm gonna get it unwrapped to take a proper shot of it fitted in the car. So here we have it, all back together. With the cardboard off, the welds are on show are all quite nice. We look down here, all a bit cozy, but it all sort of fits quite nicely. So yeah, next job, get down to Cirque's Motorsport. Uh, where who supplied the core they're going to leak test it for me and they're also going to fold up the end plates as well like the top plates just to give it a bit more strength and then i'll work on the fans after that but yeah i'm planning to mount both of these 10 inch fans here um because i was having problems with it overheating at idle so i used to run the spool and then i went to this revotech high power that didn't keep it cool and that sort of spurred this whole lot on so then i also bought this little eight inch craig david fan um, but yeah, I can just about squeeze these two on. It's a shame that they don't match, but at the end of the day, I've got them both. I'm not spending more money buying two matching fans or buying one to match them when no one's ever gonna see them anyway, really, to be fair. As long as it doesn't overheat, I don't really care at this point. 
Hello again, back on the escort again. Um, so today's aim is to try and get this loom back in again, um, try and get some of the some of the runs finalised, get them all trimmed down, and then maybe even start sleeving at some point. A um, couple of things I need to do as well is like mount the air temperature sensor, the boost control solenoid, the fuel pressure regulator, because they all have sensors in them. So this is where I'm at with the wiring. Every time I start the wiring, I just regret not paying someone to do it, but it's going all right so far. But now I just really need to decide where I'm going to put the fuel pressure regulator. It doesn't really sort of fit nicely anywhere. It's sort of everywhere looks a bit like something's in the way, mostly because I've got this massive pressure sensor hanging out the front of it. So yeah, I don't know really. I'm going to try and need to work out somewhere to put that. Or the boss for the air temp sensor, which I think that's going to bosh it in there. So it's all sort of like on display. So it probably doesn't look like any different than it did a minute ago, but I sort of finalized a couple of things. So coolant temp, air temp sensor I put there. I know the wires for my throttle were the right length. Injector loom's gonna run here. This has also got a VBT plug in it. Coil loom's gonna run here. My boost control solenoid's gonna be mounted down here somewhere. I need to sort that out. I still haven't sorted out the fuel pressure regulator because I just can't see where it's gonna look nice. So what I'm gonna do for now is I've sort of got some relents for this, I know this is right. So I'm gonna pull this back out again. A few wires, like the sensors, I'm actually gonna heat shrink. They are then the right length. Then I'll start splitting these off, taping these up individually. So each coil will have three wires. Same with the injectors and the VBT solenoid. Put it back in again, then cut them to length. Um, and then at some point I need to take the inlet manifold off and check all the wires down the back where the oil pressure sensor is and stuff like that. Really tedious and annoying, but I just want to get it right first time. I don't want to rush anything. A lot of people ask me, where do you mount an air temp sensor? Because I never add bosses in my inlet manifolds. And this is why I always say you should always add them in the boost pipe before the throttle body. And that's the best place to get the best reading from. You don't get any heat soak from the inlet or anything. So this is how my injectors are set up. I've got the short Bosch body with a bottom extension and a top extension, which also has a filter in it. I'd like to think these have a filter in them, but I actually don't know for sure. So yeah, I'm not sure if I 100% need that. Mm. So that's the problem. As soon as you put the injector in, it actually touches the head. So you can't get a plug on it. Great. So yeah, that's it compared to a normal plug. As you can see, plenty of room to then get a plug on. So I've sort of sorted the problem out. It's not the most aesthetically pleasing. So I sort of pointed the injector at an angle backwards, which means that can point that way, that can point towards it. These two can point towards each other. So the loom will still see be fairly tidy. I mean, I really wanted the loom to run across the top here, but yeah, that's gonna be it. At least it saves me buying a new set of injectors. Today's aims were to sort out the new throttle pedal and do a bit more work on the loom, mount the fuel pressure regulator that I still haven't done yet, but I know where it's gonna go now. And then, yeah, try and sort of finalize the loom under the engine bay and maybe even start putting the heat shrink on. So yeah, so this is where I am. See some of the loom sort of has heat shrink on it. I haven't actually had the balls to actually heat any of it yet. But yeah, I've got my um, pneumatic fittings in. So these are all push fit, one way valve, all in the bottom of the inlet, I did that the other day. So this morning when the GoPro was dead, I did want to film it, but yeah, I couldn't. So um, yeah, so this is the accelerator pedal mount. See nothing too fancy, just a plate. The original throttle pedal mount cut off. So yeah, I can go through there. these holes here so I can get an Allen key through to actually bolt the thing up to the car. A few moments later. So there it is in place. So it bolts up to the original mounts, obviously. Bit of a pig to get the bottom one in, but it's in, doesn't matter. So yeah, put the pedal on now. There we have it, set up pedal in, works well, it's the original stop which is well handy, there's a bit of like a plastic bit on the back of here I need to grind off because it just catches on the carpet, as you can kind of see, but other than that, I think it's bang on, it sort of sits, not quite level, a little bit further down, so yeah, it should be nice and comfortable to use, doesn't look massively out of place, I just don't need to get a rubber for here before anyone says anything, but yeah, I think that's alright, I'm quite happy with that, sitting here. 
but it's really comfortable, it feels better than mild pedal. Mild pedal was like up here. So yeah, it's got a nice amount of travel. I'm actually uh, yeah, really excited about this. So my next job is to mount the fuel pressure regulator. Um, I can't use the mount that come with it, uh, and I already broke it trying to mount it somewhere else. So yeah, I'm gonna mount this about here. I'm gonna come off of these holes I used for my old one. Um, I've got a 45 coming to link them two together. Plenty of room for everything else. And yeah, this is the uh, it's the pipe that's going to be going to it. If I actually get it in shots, this is the pipe I'm going to get going to it. So it's a pneumatic line. And then what I did, I had to then convert it to rubber because I can't fit one in here. So I've actually super glued that on there. And I could not pull that apart. It started to stretch and pull the plastic before this come off. So I put a little clip on it as well, just to make double sure. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty confident they're never going to come off of there. Finally, I've decided and it's been mounted. What I thought was going to fit in terms of the pipes isn't. I'm going to, uh, I've got a 90 there. I'm going to have to get another 90 there and do a loop at the bottom. This is a bit of flex for the engine. I've got 45 to go on here to go down to the return. Next job, I think I'm going to have a go at making the plate to mount the coils on. Just going to do it by hand to get it done. And then uh, I thought that's a good few of the little jobs sorted for today. There's a coil on plate, plug, quickly done. See they're just on little spacers there. There's a wiring for that, so that's all sorted. Over there, wiring for the sensor. Air temp, coolant temp. Just strip this down now, get the inlet back off. And uh, I'll show you some problems I've had with that as well. So these are the last bit of subloom that I've got to cut to length. So I've got, that's the starter solenoid. Um, this one here is for the knock sensor, which is luckily perfectly long enough. Oh, my torch has just gone out. So yeah, knock sensor, perfect length luckily. Must have trimmed that before. Um, lambda sensors, wire, which probably should have left a little bit longer, but that's all right. Because the one on the down on the sensor will be long. And then I've got one of these is gearbox sensor, speed sensor, and one of them is oil pressure sensor. So I've ordered another switch to go in here, well, but an adapter to go in there that I can put this switch in and then have the pressure sensor coming off of there. 